Hello, YouTube. Um, so if you if you search through my channel, you will quickly notice that I really like doing comparative videos, comparative reviews, um, because I think comparison and context is kind of everything. You know, we, we always, anytime we buy anything, it's always in a context of everything else in the liquor store, everything else that's sort of available to us in some, you know, broad sense. So if you're not bringing in some kind of points of comparison to talk about something, um, you're really not providing that much useful information. Now, most of the videos I do, as far as comparisons go, like I'm comparing sort of like with like, um, two things from the same category, two things from the same brand sometimes even. Um, this time I thought I would have a little bit of fun because th there have been things that I, I bought recently that I wanted to review and I couldn't find like something to slot them into and I didn't want to do with some kind of, um, you know, single, uh, single bottle review. So what I've done here is I'm, I'm going to try to do a like, here's my shopping cart kind of video, uh, just stuff like I wanted to buy and that I have bought, um, uh, fairly recently, um, not totally recently, but fairly recently. Um, and just across categories there, uh, I'm not throwing any rum in here because I like to, cause I'd like to save my rums for like individual reviews because for some reason, they seem to be most, my most popular videos. Um, anyhow, so what I've got here is a Armagnac uh, Blanche, white Armagnac, unaged Armagnac. Uh, I have a Mezcal. Uh, I have Maker's Mark Cast Strength because I wanted to try it. And uh, Bunahaman 12 Year Old, which is uh, an old classic. This is, came in a gift set, which also gave me a awesome new water glass. So people have been complaining about how grimy and crappy my um, my mason jars look. So we will now be using uh, these uh, Bunahaman glasses as water glasses for a little while, at least. All right. So this is just stuff I wanted to buy. Um, all right. Let's 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 go through. Let's talk about uh, what we got here. All right. So starting with this guy, uh, this is uh, a Fine Blanche. Um, Blanche Armagnac from Chateau Arton uh, by um, uh, Patrick de Montal. This is the basically the the OG of the um, uh, white Armagnac category. So if 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 you don't know, this is basically Armagnac straight off the still, um, and they they created the uh, this particular DOC particularly for this bottling. Now uh, in um, in 2005, so they couldn't actually label it as a white Armagnac until 2005, but they were making it for like a couple of decades before then. <clears throat> now, what's interesting to me, so it was the price point on this. Um, I picked this up at uh, 57th Street Wines here in Hyde Park. I live in Hyde Park in Chicago for $14, 14 bucks. Um, that is like way under half of retail price. I think this this originally uh, retail in the in like the the 30s. So someone's closing this out hard. Um and uh, it seemed like for this this price for something that is, you know, distilled to you know, I mean I mean this is like basically on an charge Armagnac. So they're probably distilling this to only sort of 50 55% alcohol. So it's going to have a lot of character. So I thought it was worth grabbing. All right, so um, let's uh, let's see what we got here. By the way, this particular uh, edi uh, edition was uh, the 2016 Harvest. Uh, and there's some other stuff on here. This is bottle 1419 of I don't know how many, but there we go. Um, what do we got here? Um, okay, on the nose, um, this smells like grape eau de vie which you would expect because it's basically distilled wine, distilled, you know, fermented grapes. So you're getting sort of white grapes. Uh, you're getting lychee fruit. You're getting kiwi. You're getting a lot of white flowers, um, which is nice. It's, it's, it's a little bit simple. There's a little bit of a sort of metallic note, like um, 
like the 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 white flowers maybe the t1000 is handing you the white flowers and you're sort of smelling the liquid metal um uh very floral maybe maybe not the t1000 maybe it's more like a it's more like a an old hammer like a hammer it's not quite rusting yet but it's it's just it's been around for 40 years and it's starting it's starting to get a little uh a little age on it uh there is an interesting kind of savory note to this like uh like um uh you know you open up you'll open up a package of steak and it's like two days past expiration and it's starting to get a little funky there's a little bit of that in here like steak that's a little bit off um limestone beeswax uh that's it that's a fun one and even like a sweet lemon like a mayor lemon is in here um it's it's uh I, I mean i'm naming some some um fairly interesting notes i guess but it, this actually it smells quite simple it smells very um uh there aren't a lot of sort of layers to this it's all kind of presented as one as one big thing but it's nice um on the palette mm -hmm. kind of carries on from the nose oh that's nice um not hugely complex uh you're getting you know grapes um more like grape skins than actual grapes there's a nice sweetness to this there's a um there's a little bit of a honey component to this flowers acacia comes to mind in particular lychee fruit again the mayor lemon thing again kind of like a like a lemonade stand note like a um you know your your six-year-old made made you lemonade now she's trying to sell it to you because that's how capitalism works mm. kind of like a like a smoky thing but it's, it's like um like a stony smoky thing so if you like light some some rocks on fire if that makes sense which doesn't make sense i'm, I'm sorry um there that sweetness is actually it's not very it's not actually honey it's more like an agave note actually which is strange because the next one is, is an agave uh based spirit um waxy a little kind of like an oily like a viognier note like like oil and smoke um with a little bit of stone fruit like uh that, that kind of viognier thing mm -mm. nice very pleasant a little simple but for 14 bucks man i mean this is uh this is a it's actually a little bit of a bargain um moving on though all right so uh second up this is you ball mezcal artisanal uh miguel es uh, Mege espadine joven uh young Young, so young distilled espadine. Um, so this is from Oaxaca somewhere, uh, San Juan del, del Rio, um, seven-year-old agave. Uh, they're cooking in a concave stone oven, so not a pit. This is important. Um, uh, stone mill, uh, naturally fermented, and they're use they're distilling in in copper stills. With uh, Master Mescalero, Isaias Martinez Juan. Um, all right, so so uh, the thing with so this is like a, one of a whole bunch of sort of budget mezcals in that sort of thirty to forty dollar range. The the big the big um, player in that range is is um, obviously the Del Maguey, the uh, the Vida, uh, which is very heavily smoked um, and is sort of along with with the single village stuff, so like the Chichicapa in particular, has sort of set the American expectation for what mezcal should be. Um, this interested me because it's distilled, um, well, first, okay, back up a little bit. We're, 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 we're that's, that's me rewinding. Um, rewinding, uh, to this mezcal artisanal part. So, um, if you were to look in the grocery store or, or the liquor store or whatever, and you're trying to buy yourself a mezcal, the Mexican government has now made it a little bit easier for you to narrow things down uh due to this due to the tiered um 
classification system for Mezcal they've, they've passed recently. Um, if something only says Mezcal on it, they can make it pretty much whatever the way they want. They can use these diffusers, these god-awful things that tequila has been fighting against for you know, at least a decade and a half. Um, they, can, uh, they can do anything. Um, uh, however, if it says Mezcal Artisanal, this is what you want to see on your bottle. If it says that, it means no diffusers, no column stills. They got to do this the old-fashioned way. Uh, with uh, they have got to cook the cave in these in these um, stone ovens or these old-fashioned pits, uh, and they got to distill it with pot stills. Um, so that's what you want to see. There's also a, a third tier called uh, mezcal ancestral, uh, which is the nerdy uh, clay pot distilled stuff. We don't need to get into that. Uh, this is what you want to see. Um, this is what you want to look for. If it doesn't say that, you can kind of rule it out right away pretty easily. Um, the reason was I wanted to try this one, and I bought this one, is because it, has, it comes in a massive 48% alcohol, um, which, is, which is quite high for mezcals in this price range. So basically my thought is, if this is good, uh, I can you know, do a, a video sort of touting the amazingness of this. And uh, because there are no, I haven't seen other reviews of this yet. All right, so let's give this, uh, let's give this a, a nose, a nosing. Bubble gum is actually the leading note. There's not a lot of smoke on this. There's a little bit if you go looking for it, but it's it's very modest. Um, you're really more getting straight up distilled espadine, uh, honestly. Um, bubble gum. There's a kind of fresh hay note, um, uh, sort of mixed in with uh, just like flowers. Um, really roses, actually, just straight up Turkish delight, and then. Take your Turkish delight and then cover it in like you know hay and grass, but nice. Um, kind of that wood smoky thing, but again, not very much. Um, nothing compared to the the Vita. There is actually something in this that reminds me of of, of malt liquor. You know the cheap beer you 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 see featured in. Um, like crappy liquor corner liquor stores and um, and hip hop circa the early nineties. Um, private stock actually Heffenreffer style private stock, which was uh, one of Biggie's favorites, as I recall. But nice. I mean, there's is that that kind of the kind of a uh, uh, grainy bubble gummy note. It's very prominent, but I, I'm kind of I'm really enjoying it actually. There's some basil in this, a little bit, a little bit sort of herb garden um, agave, just straight up agave syrup. Uh, tea leaves, little, you know, older tea leaves. Um, something, something a little, that reminds me of like expensive shampoo. No, more like an expensive conditioner, like that, that, um, Nothing soapy in here, but it's more conditioner. Uh, on the palate, mm -hmm. not the first thing you think of when you think of mezcal. Again, the Vita has sort of defined expectations for the category. Um, but nice, very floral, a lot of, um, bubble gum still that, that be very heavy on the bazooka Joe. Um, uh, I was going to say double bubble, but really bazooka Joe, um, kind of white dog, a little bit of like, uh, like, uh, 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 unaged, uh, uh, bourbon, frankly, um, some spearmint in there, a little, a little thyme. Hold on, let me, let me try this again. Thyme, oregano, ooh, just straight up like freshly cut grass. Um, hints of like Wheaties, uh, like the cereal, um, uh, which is great because I love Wheaties. Uh, a little bit of a like 
like cheap oolong tea, like not the not the nice stuff you order um, from New York, and it's like it's like you know a zillion dollars per per pound. This is this this is like you know you buy it in the grocery store and it comes in little little tea bags. Um, not great oolong, but it's sort of there. Uh, and something that reminds me that something oaky in here. Um, let me try this one more time. Again, very little smoke. There's a little bit of like a like a burning pile of leaves in this. Um, but that oak thing is kind of is kind of throwing me. It's it's not. This it doesn't doesn't come off as aged or anything like that. It's more like, but the, you do get this a little bit of this sort of vanilla and a, a, a hint of the coconut thing and a hint of the sawdusty thing. It's really like you're you're sort of standing, uh, you know, you're not you're not in the cooperage, right? You're not sort of right there, but you're sort of ac across the street. Well, they're saw sawing and smoking things and and doing all this stuff. You're sort of, sort, of, sort of indirectly kind of getting it. Um, yeah, that's weird. Um, okay, so not not at all what people sort of traditionally think of when they think of, of uh, mezcal, especially es espadine mez mezcal, but uh, like this is pretty good. I'm enjoying this. Um, let's give it a squirt of water. We'll come back to it in a second. Let's give it like a squirt and a half. There we go. Moving on to the uh, the age stuff in my uh, my shopping cart. All right, why did I buy Maker's Mark Cast Strength? Because um, so well, so I tried this a couple of years ago, uh, and I was not a huge fan. I never bought like a full bottle. Um, obviously, I bought bottles of, of Maker's Mark before because every American has. Um, but uh, I I remember thinking it was. You know, a, kind of boring. Um, uh, but I came back to it because uh, uh, there aren't a lot of other options as far as like weeded bourbons go, and there aren't a lot of not a lot of other options as far as like um, cast strength bourbons is for forty bucks goes. Like this was on sale for less than that. Um, so you know, for, for you know, less than forty bucks for. Something bottled at fifty four point five percent alcohol, model, you know, marked as cast strength, that seems like a, a little bit of a bargain. So it seemed like it was a, it was worth a shot, even if I found Maker's Mark to be a little bit um, unremarkable uh, in the past. Um, all right, so you know, we uh, uh, Maker's Mark, we did mash bill made in um, part of the uh, the the Beam um, portfolio. Made in uh, Loretto, Loretto uh, Kentucky. Uh, I have no, I, I cannot remember where that is. I, I probably knew at some point. Um, all right, let's see what we got. This particular one is batch uh, twenty dash zero four, bottled at fifty four point five percent alcohol. I know there are folks on the internet chasing down, you know, uh, the best possible batches of this stuff. I just grab what was on the shelf. All right, nose. Okay, um, bourbon, <laughs> it smells like bourbon, um, so you're getting, you know, um, vanilla bean, you're getting, um, you're getting some toast, but then like, uh, you know, put some cinnamon sugar and some butter on your toast, um, um, that kind of thing, a little toasted corn. Tree bark, little tree bark. Um, it, root beer. Um, there's some root beer in this. Vague hints of of like um, kind of an herbal thing. It's hard to pin down. Like you just kind of like you know, there's somewhere in your vicinity. There's there's someone growing herbs, and that's kind of what I'm getting. Cinnamon stick. I already, I know I already mentioned the cinnamon, but it's kind of. Um, that's kind of it. Uh, it, it smells bourbony. Um, you know, uh, um, 
sorry that that's that's all I got. Um, this is very um, I mean it, um, that's all that's all it's doing. <laughs> that's giving me like like a handful of flavors and I, I can't give you more than those. Okay, on the palette, again, you know, cast strength, which is nice. That's good. Good for them. Arrive sweet on the palette. Closes, um, ooh. Um, okay, closes dry, which is very traditionally American, but there's also like a, um, there's an astringent note to this. Um, a little bit, hmm. Hold on, let me try this again. Yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And then it kind of, like there's this, it isn't just woody. Um, there's a little bit of like a varnish note, like you less sort of lack, like licked a hardwood floor. Like a, not a nice hardwood floor either. Um, uh, ooh. I mean, it, it's not the worst finish in the world. It's just kind of tied in with this thing, which is otherwise just kind of oak, oak sugar, oak candy. Um, so cinnamon, uh, well, let me try this one more time. Mm -hmm. Jeez, what do I do? What do I do with this? Um, okay, here's what we're going to do. Okay, so take, um, take some cinnamon toast crunch, you know, the cereal with the, uh, Weird bakery guys in uh, whatever the hell those those mascots were for the for the cinnamon. Toast. Take like a bunch of cinnamon toast crunch, like two handfuls of the stuff, and then you're gonna kind of pour them on top of some vanilla ice cream. Um, actually, amend that vanilla custard, just just custard, not even ice cream. Um, you can stir it up, stir it up all over the place, um, right? And uh, get a good mix. Of, and then I want you to take like a, like an oak plank. Uh, and then uh, what you would like, a, not even an oak plank, just take an oak tree, like one you, you freshly cut down. And I want you to bludgeon your sort of cereal slash custard mix. Um, and uh, you may say, why would you do such a thing? And I, I share that, that question with you, dear viewer. Um, yeah, okay, try this one more time. Oh, yeah, so it's, I mean, that's what I'm getting. It's, it's sort of, you know, vanilla custard with the cinnamon toast cereal thing. But then there's like tree bark and it's and it's a mess and it's flying everywhere and there's like twigs and that varnishy note and um, um, okay there's there's a little bit of menthol in the finish that's kind of that, that, that's okay um, it's not the the worst finish I've had in the world um, I mean there's just um, I, I'm a little bit a little bit speechless of this. It, it, there's just not that much going on that, well, at all, but especially that I like. Um, so I'm gonna give this a squirt of water or two, and we're gonna come back to this and see, you know, to what extent it develops. Is that enough? Let's see. Mm. Oh, sorry, I never gave you the rule. So. I try, I try everything uh, through once, um, just neat, and then I add water, give it a chance to develop, and then um, try it again. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the third most popular bourbon in America, and um, and this is apparently like one of the better versions of it, and. Yeah, there's not a whole lot going on. Um, okay, let's move on. 
Bunahaven. Uh, Bunahaven, the apparently by volume at least the largest distillery on Isla. This, so so single malt, uh, twelve year old, small batch distilled. Um, large largest distillery on on um, on Isla by volume. They just don't make as much stuff as Kalila does. So um, uh, yeah, that, that's that's where we are. Uh, uh, does not usually peat its whiskey, although it does it does now. Um, you will find peated Kalila or peated Bunahavans all over the place. But traditionally, you know, it's it's uh, unpeated and um, aged in usually sherry cask. That's kind of their their deal. Um, I remember loving this a bit, a, like 10 years ago when even when it was still bottled at 40% and I loved it even more when they when they upped the strength to or what is this now uh, the 46.3% which is um, very picky uh, they all they're also unchill not chill filtering this and they're labeling it as natural color so all good things all right so wow that maker's mark is just it, um, it's not bad. It's just nothing is happening. Um, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I will put that out of my mind and we'll talk about this little Buna. Um, okay. On the nose. Very sherry, extremely sherry, um, at first. I mean, they're, they're, they're saying that there's, uh, there's other stuff in this. Let's see. Um, Matured in sherry, bourbon, and whiskey casks. I'm not getting the, the bourbon and whiskey cask at all. I don't even know what whiskey cask means. Um, this smells like a little bit of a sherry bomb to me. So, so you're getting sort of raisins, black pepper, a little bit of prune, but not too much. Um, but then there's this this leafiness, which is kind of the, the Bunahaban signature for me. Um, it, no matter what cask it, it gets aged in, I usually get that sort of leafy character. Um, a little uh, English breakfast tea. Um, it's a very malty tea. You're getting um, so let's just, let's stick with that malty theme. You're getting malted milk balls, including the chocolate part. Uh, and you're getting some some like um, very distinct maritime notes. There's there's a little bit of like 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 just sea air, a little bit of brininess to this, which I really like. There's a little bit of um like a like a, a nut liqueur thing in this. You know the um what the hell is that stuff in the um you know the bottle with the uh, the, that's shaped in like a monk shaped. Uh, do, you, do, you know, do you want? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Leave a comment if you know what I'm talking about. Like the the monk shaped bottle uh, with the monk uh, shape. I'm kind of getting that on the nose. Um, but then sea breeze. There's some 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 burned marshmallows. Um, some figs like a like a Turkish fig thing. Um, and sherry, frankly, like, like, um, like a really nice pala cortado, a little bit like, you know, take a, take an Oloroso, pull it back, pull that, um, oxidase note back a little bit. Um, this is nice. This is a good nose. Um, I mean, it's really, let me pull, pull back, simplify a little bit. What you're getting here is a sherry bomb, but a sherry bomb with those maritime notes and that sort of leafiness that only, like, not only Bunnhaven can do, but Bunnhaven sort of distinctively does. Um, it's a really nice nose. Um, okay, on the palate. Classic sherry bomb stuff. You're really getting the sherry influence. Just going to war with that, uh, hold on, with that uh, maltiness. So, you know, it's it's a Paulo Cortado sherry picking a fight with a malted milk ball 
and you know no holds barred and they're you know going at each other in the octagon and i am enjoying it but the, then there's that leafiness that um kind of green uh i don't know like like um uh, like grape leaves like uh you know mediterranean cuisine that kind of thing No peat, but there is that maritime note. Like you can tell, this was made right by the sea. You're just you're just getting the sea breeze on the palate. Figs, um, kind of cheap raisins. No, re really more like raisinets. Uh, you're getting the chocolate there. Um, you know those like chocolate almond clusters? Like they're like turtles, but they don't have like the the nougaty stuff. Just just nuts and chocolate. Um, there's a little bit of a black pepper note. Mm. Kind of a white wine note, like um, like an like an like Sauvignon Blanc, but like older Sauvignon Blanc that's been a little bit, so it's oxidizing a little bit, it's aging, like a really good polyfumé or something, like a, um, uh, and, and then that sort of leafy thing. Oh, and there's like a, oh, right in the middle, there's like an origin note, like um, a, kind of a little bit of an orange liqueur note, uh, a little more sort of, overtly orangey than like an like a Grenier Marnier kind of thing but um so you know you're adding a little bit of Cointreau into your Grand Marnier that kind of thing seaside that that oh, that sea breeze thing is is real man um Cigar wrap, uh, like a like a Connecticut cigar leaf, but also like that fresh um, tree leaf thing. Like just like pull some leaves off a tree and, and throw them in your mouth. Can you tell there's a lot more going on in this than in this? Like th this is this is not. I mean, it's no contest contest over on this side of the screen. Um, all right. So I'm enjoying this Bunahaban very, very much. Um, I did make that that uh, sort of video where I, where I was sort of um, dunking on Macallan. Uh, and when I was making that, I was thinking I should probably include Macallan 12 because it's off like most people's radars as far as sherry bombs go, but it's a terrific sherry bomb. And um, I just didn't do it. And, and now, yeah, I've been reminded, yeah, this is... This is really good as far as like, you know, just sherry mature whiskey goes. Okay, um, let's go back through. I'm gonna try. Uh, <clears throat> try these all of these one more time. All right, back to the uh, the 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 fine blanche. Okay, with a little bit of water in it now. On the nose. Okay, it's kind of the same. Uh, very grape driven, grape eau de vie, like like before. There's a little lime coming through now. A um, little lime juice. Um, wait, I'm gonna. And that, that sort of like metal metallic thing, like like a almost a metal smoke note. Doesn't you know? Doesn't develop all that much. The sweetness comes out a little bit. Which is nice. Um, more smoke than before. A little, um, a little blueberry. Um, not quite pot. Just, just raw blueberry. You know, just pull some off, off, off the, the bush. On the palate. Hmm. That sweet note also comes out more on the palate. Um, oh, that's that's lovely. I mean, very simple, very basic. I mean, this is something 
that feels like it's just meant to go into oak for 30 years. Um, uh, it's, it's, that's what it is. It, it's, it is a canvas upon which an amazing barrel uh, will make its masterwork. But I mean, it's, it's, it's it, as simple as it is, it's pleasant to drink also. Let me try this one more time. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what we got. Um, Grape Ode V, metal smoke, um, slightly floral. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little uh, uh, limited, but not bad at all. I mean, what, so what I would suggest with this is, um, this feels like it was made for, for cocktails, but at the same time, I feel like uh, if it's being closed out rather aggressively, uh, it, it suggests to me that people are having trouble making, you know, winning cocktails with this stuff. And part of it is just, it might be a little bit too simple. I mean, there's a freshness to this, which is delightful. But I would, what I would suggest to the mixologists out there who want to buy this for $14, can I repeat that? $14 for a bottle of this. Um, bottled at 45% alcohol. This, that's, that's a little bit of a bargain. What I would suggest to you is um, grab some aged stock. This, this is the, the Delord Napoleon, 10 year old, that uh, I reviewed a little while back. Um, all I'm gonna do is just vat a little bit of this into my, uh, um, totally unaged uh, Blanche Armagnac. This is a trick I learned from really tequila, although it's also used in rum, in rum sometimes. Um, I mean, you would think that the result of adding an aged stock or uh, to something unaged or the, or the other way around would just be, they, they make, they kind of meet in the middle. You just get, you know, instead of something 10 years old like that, um, the Lord, you get something that comes across as five years old. And that's not really what happens. What you get, what you get is sort of um, the sort of older, oakier Rancio notes um, to the extent that they show up, but combined combined with a little bit of nice freshness. Uh, oh, that's nice. The um, the oak and the age is lifting this a little bit. The lime is coming through. The the lychee fruit is coming through but also a little bit of vanilla um, on the palate. That is much better as a base for a cocktail. Oh man, you could do so much with this. I mean, just throw some bitters in this, um, make a sour out of this. I mean, just, yeah. Oh, that's good. One more time. Yeah, the, the freshness combined with the, 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 the aged, aged notes, and that slightly drying uh, sensation from the oak tannins, that really works well together. Um, so what I would suggest for the mixologists out there, so let me, let me give this, I would score this 79 out of 100. It's a hair but basic, but um, you know, well worth a grab, especially at the price that um, 57th Street Wines is offering at a mixologist. Um, what I would suggest for you is just is to just combine this with some aged Armagnac. Um, you know, get a case of this, and then just as you're making drinks, um, you know, vat the two together, and you'll it works. You know, that's, that's all I got to say. I mean, it works really, really well. Um, that's what I got. Uh, fit, uh, uh, 79 points for this guy. Let's move on. All right, back to the U-Ball. Um, so the note for this was, was um, that I enjoyed it. It was very bubble gummy. It was, it was um, very kind of malt liquory in a way that I liked. Um, did not have the smoke that mezcal typically has, but let's see what some water did to it. Oh, 
Okay, the bubble gum comes out a little bit more. And that sort of slight, like, uh, like artisanal conditioner note comes out a little bit more. But nice. I mean, I'm enjoying this. Uh, it's also like a, a little bit vegetal, but a little bit cereally too. Like, um, not Wheaties now. It's more like, uh, it smells like, like vegetal Lucky Charms or something. Like, um, like, you know, you just made, I don't know, uh, like vegetable versions of those little elf guys, um, that, no, it wasn't, there was like just the one elf guy, right? Okay, whatever. Um. And then that weird sort of hint at oak that isn't really, isn't really oaky. It's not oak aging or anything like that. It's just just a little gesture in that direction. On the palette, sweetens up. It gets a little bit greener too. So you're getting like like candied Brussels sprouts, um, a little grass that throws some bubble gum in there, um, some broccoli, uh, candied broccoli. Um, it's nice. I really like this, actually. Uh, I think this is one of the better values in um, sort of that, that sort of uh, 30 to $40 mezcal range. Here's the thing about this. Okay, so, well, score-wise, I would call this an 84. This is an 84... Uh, easy. It's um, it's very good. The problem with this is, um, how do I put this? So so, wine reviewers will often use the term correct. Uh, this is you know correct for the varietal of the region. This is not correct. And what they mean by that, Jess Robinson loves that note. She will she will call things correct and incorrect all the time. Um, what they, what they're getting at that is, um, with that is, uh, the thought that, you know, this either, um, sort of follows the expectations of what is on the, stated on the label as far as a varietal or region, or it doesn't like it meets the expectations or not. Um, and you might say, like, okay, well, fuck expectations. I mean, this is, you know, what matters is, you know, it's, it's 84. It's pretty good, um, right? It's, um, but not so much. I mean, I mean, um, expectations really define a lot of what is going on in, in how spirits sell. And I mean, how anything sells. Um, I mean, go back and, uh, if you have a moment, go back and read Husserl, um, Edmund Husserl, the great phenomenologist, the philosopher. Uh, his sixth logical investigation, and you will he will describe to you in some detail how the world is really made up more of expectation, what he calls meaning, um, than it is what is sort of physically bodily given, right? I mean that's so it's it's ex expectation that weaves together um, what we experience and indeed are what, what's going on in the liquor store. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's for Jancis to say, you know, uh, this is correct or not is actually extremely helpful for the, the store owner and the consumer because, you know, that, that, I mean, at, at a certain, like for, for most buyers, if something is really good, but it doesn't meet the expectations they had, that's still not good. Um, and if it if it's crap, but it meets the expectations they had, and that can still you know get them where they need to be. Um, you know, reading Husserl will help you understand the spirits, actually the whole beverage industry. Um, so that's that's my warning with this. I think this is really good. It is not correct for Espadine Mezcal from Oaxaca. Um, it does not have that heavy smoky note that I think people are looking for. Um, that's kind of all I, all I got to say about it. Um, 84 points with that asterisk, asterisk of, you know, if you just want smokiness by the Vita, it's, you know, it's that easy. Um, okay, moving on. Let me try this one more time. I really do like that sort of bubblegummy broccoli note though. All right, moving on.
Um, oh god, here we go again. Um, Maker's Mark. Uh, cast strength. Um, now with a little bit of water. Let's see what this does. Um, I mean, the O comes out to play uh, a little bit more than before. Um, gets more peppery, more more white pepper coming out now. Some like burn nutshells, some tree bark, um, like just co cooperage notes, like um, just raw oak. I mean, the the distillate is completely gone. Um, Oof, yeah, this is, um, there's not that much going on in this, uh, frankly. All right, on the palette. I mean, it's, a, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same as it was before I added water. It just tastes weaker now. Um, America, why why are you buying this? I mean, this is... Uh, I just... I, I'm a little, a little bit baffled. Um, well, no, I, I, I know why you're buying this. Because, um, I mean, it's, it's a weed whiskey at cast strength. And that's, you know, great stats. It's just not very interesting i mean it's it this is i mean there's like three three flavors going on and they're all kind of meh honestly uh, so i mean here's about so i've, I've set some bottles up, up over there because i anticipated this um here's the problem with this um for less money right you can buy old granddad 114 uh which is a similar proof this is actually higher uh, costs 10 bucks less, also from the Beam portfolio. And wow, is there more going on in this than there is in this. Um, and uh, you might say, of course, but but Scott, I can't, I don't want to buy that because that is rye based. Uh, that is a high rye bourbon, and I want a wheat bourbon. Um, you know, I want something with, with wheat in it. Otherwise, you know, I can't be, so, so, and that's why I'm going to buy my, um, my Maker's Mark cast strength. I mean, so, okay, fair enough. I mean, there's no like larceny cast strength, right? Um, incidentally, so uh, tangent, why is there no larceny cast strength? I mean, what are, what are the people at Heaven Hill doing? Just, just like, what is like, you have one of the quickest Google results for like, what is um, Pappy like? Like, here's your you ha you're selling a weeded bourbon in 2020. Like, what are you doing with your Larceny Old Fitzgerald portfolio? Just put out a cast strength version, put out some older versions, just suck up the money. Like people are want to pay for this stuff. Oh, Jesus. Um, sorry. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, um, uh, soapboxing a little bit. Product development is not hard. Like, like uh, you know, there's there's an equivalent now for that old um, chess that old insult that Churchill ma made. Uh, he, that man couldn't run a wilk shop. You can now say that man couldn't sell a weeded bourbon in twenty in twenty twenty one. Um, sorry, Heaven Hell, like y'all need to get your sh your your stuff together. Um, so if you say, uh, well, I want I want something weeded. Uh, well, you can buy. Dry Creek Wheat Whiskey. There's a whole bunch of wheat, wheated whiskeys, actually, that you can buy that are um, way more characterful than this. Um, and this is probably on the closeout shelf because, you know, it doesn't have a lot of, sh of, of press going for it. And, um, you know, but even if it wasn't, I mean, this is, this is way better value than this is. Um, so go buy this instead. Or by your old granddad, you know, whatever. Um, just, this smells like white pepper and bark. Um,
brown sugar closing on again like tree bark um this is a pretty i mean it's just there's nothing going on i mean it's it's uh, i'm gonna give this 76 no that's i mean wait that's I mean, the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel is pretty good. The mouthfeel is fine. Um, let's call this uh, 77 out of 100. Man. Um, and move on. Uh, okay, Bunahaven, 12 year old. Um, okay, let's, let's see what this has done with the water. Oh, thank God, it's not Maker's Mark. I um, guess it's a little more peppery than it was at, at strength. A um, little, little, little more um, like coal smoke going on. And there's a, a lot more sort of an orange peel note going on. Um, almost like Quantro is, is coming through at this point. On the palette... Yeah, actually, it's it's the orangeiness that kind of starts to take over a little bit. But that that maritime note is still there. That um, that leafy note is still there. Um, so you're really getting leafiness and sea breeze and Cointreau and all that little kind of other minerality, the sherry notes. Oh, yeah, it's nice. I mean, this is what you're getting. Essentially, this is this is um, if I could redo that sort of uh, don't drink McCallum video, I would be throwing this in like in a second. This has got like 90%, 95% of like the sherryness, the sherry bomb nature of that uh, Glendronic going on. But then it's throwing like this maritime note and that leafiness on top of that, which is just adding this extra layer of depth um, It's really nice. Um, I'm gonna give this 86 out of 100. Um, yeah, that's what I got. So uh, we got we got a that's my shopping cart at the moment. Um, obviously, there, there was some lump rums. There would be rums in here if I wasn't saving those for their, their own video. But um, uh, we got some some low lows and some uh, some high highs, and um, some sort of fun oddballs. Um, that's kind of what I got. I hope this was educational, kind of, maybe. Thanks for watching and uh, cheers.